please pray for your boy? <laughs> My neighbors don't come around here anymore. I'm that weird guy on the block. Damn it! Help me out! Welcome back to Ryan Campbell's Soup to Nuts. Believe it or not, this is a channel about cars. I know that uh, little intro wouldn't lead you to believe that, but it's true! Because I said so. And this video, I'm gonna be doing all the buttoning up crap on the 350Z twin turbo project to get it ready to start. It's happening. It's happening. You are tuned in to Ryan Campbell Soup to Nuts. Well, you've made it this far, you might as well keep hanging around and watching the video. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Don't forget to subscribe down here, give me a like, thumbs up, all that good crap. Please hit the notification bell and have it set to all so that way you know when I drop another stupid ass video. That's right. These videos are stupid. Nah, they're, they're not. They're, they might be a little silly from time to time, but they're pretty uh, neat. Pretty neat. Uh, so, I'm going to be working on the Twin Turbo 350Z project. Uh, for those of you who are new here, haven't seen me before. Uh, I had another uh, 350Z Twin Turbo that I got an accident with. So, I basically took all the parts off that car and I bought another 350Z. So, I put all the parts onto that car. And I also did a whole bunch of other stuff too that the other car didn't have that I'm adding to it as well. Uh, now I'm at the point where basically I have almost pretty much the whole car together minus a few things uh, And I'm almost ready to uh, try to start it up. Hopefully fingers crossed uh, So I just have to do like a little buttoning up stuff to do a little wires vacuum hoses some cleaning some tidying that type of crap uh, I'll do a little walk around and show you the only big thing left on the car hopefully is uh, Painting and installing the body kit. I already have it fitted up it's not actually on the car right now, but I already fitted it and all that good crap previously. And uh, so I just have to do that. And also, like once I get it started, I also have to take it to get tuned as well. Uh, but other than that, it's ready. It's ready. All right, uh, I'm going to do a walk around and show you all the little miscellaneous type of crap that I got to do. And then I'm going to start doing it. Because that's what I do. I do it. My neighbors don't come around here anymore. I'm that weird guy on the block. <laughs> uh, my neighbors love me because I'm effing awesome. I'm awesome. So this is the car. Obviously, you got the engine in, the uh, whole front end together, most of the car together. Uh, I powder coat the Brembo brakes. I don't have the wheels on now, obviously. Uh, still on jack stands because no wheels. Uh, I got all the suspension hooked up. Uh, I just recently just put air horns in, which you could check out that video um, up here. Uh, so I did all the air horns and some wiring crap, uh, pretty much ready to go, I got all the intercooler piping bolted up, that was kind of a saga, uh, that was, uh, that was quite a, quite a saga, uh, so that's all buttoned up and done, I had the interior, this car came with a tan interior, uh, the other one was a black interior, so I swapped out the interior, so basically have the whole interior together besides, uh, the seats. That's the only real thing, and a couple pieces in the trunk, but basically the seats. Obviously, this is part of what I have to do. I have to tidy up. That was that was a pipe that didn't fit properly, uh, but basically just have some tidying to do. As you see, you know, a little bit of stuff just from working in here. So that's one of the things I have to do is tidy that up. Um, I'm not going to put the hood on now, uh, just in case I have major issues or something like that. So uh, once this car is started running and you know things are good, I'll put the hood on. Uh, obviously, you have to tidy this stuff up, do a little housekeeping here. Uh, I got a few hoses still to hook up. Got to hook up the blow off valve hose. Uh, got to hook up the MAF sensor under, underneath, or the MAF sensor underneath here. Uh, got to plug in the uh, the wire for the AC. 
Um, got some other hoses to hook up. Uh, vacuum hose here. This vacuum hose. Uh, the vacuum hose on the fuel pressure regulator here. Got to hook that up. Uh, I'm gonna zip tie all this stuff off. Uh, I'm gonna zip tie like you know the vacuum hose. I'm gonna put vacuum hose on. Put a zip tie on it to hold it on. I uh, gotta put obviously uh, the cow plastics. The uh, that's the brake cover. Uh, did a lot of wiring crap here. Uh, hooked up everything on the battery. Uh, I have a built-in battery charger. Uh, you can see right there. So um, I gotta plug that in and get that going. Uh, but the battery does have you know somewhat of a charge. Uh, I do have to uh, fix. I got a better ring terminal uh, to use to put onto here. So I have to t have to do that. There's some slack on this ground wire, so I have to do that. Uh, uh, I got the uh, plastics for the wheel wells. I took them off. I had them off doing all the work and everything like that. Uh, so while I had them off, I cleaned them up really well. I used Solution Finish, which is like a trim restore. I uh, restored it all. It looks um, brand new, at least on one side. I didn't do the back side. Uh, I washed the back side, but I didn't do the Solution Finish on the back side. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can see it kind of still has that old chalky look. Uh, I didn't do it back because no, you're never going to see it. You know, until I take it off, and it was really, it was quite a bit of work to, because of all the little grooves and crevices and all that crap. It, it took quite some time actually to, to do that. So, I didn't want to do both sides of the back for no damn reason. Got to put them on. That's probably the first thing I'm actually going to do is put the, uh, got another plastic here. Uh, so, I'm going to put the, all the uh, plastics in uh, the wheel wells, take care of that. And then, first I have to change the oil filter, it still has the other old oil filter on it, so I got to change the oil filter, uh, I got to change the washer on the drain plug, I think it's dripping a little bit, so I'm going to put a new washer on the drain plug, there's no oil, oil in it right now, so I'm going to take care of those two things, fill it with oil. Uh, to start off with, uh, the radiator is empty right now, I'm just going to put water in, um, distilled water, so that way there's no minerals or anything in it, so I'm going to put distilled water and fill it up with that first. Uh, just to get it started running, everything like that. If everything checks out kosher, then I'll dump that and then put it in the coolant because I don't want to waste money on coolant. If, if there's a problem, I have to dump it or something's leaking, something like that. I don't want to sit there and start dumping money for no damn reason. Uh, water's cheap. So, um, yeah, I got to fill that with water, oil, check all, double check all the fluids. Uh, I already did. I have fresh fluid, a brake fluid throughout the whole system, blood the whole system, fresh, fresh fluid in the clutch. I actually replaced the clutch line, put a brake clutch line in. Uh, the brake lines I also upgraded to uh, the braided stainless, so that, you know, whole, th whole thing is uh, taken care of, it all bled and taken care of. Hopefully it's bled, hopefully it works. I haven't road tested, obviously, so we'll see about that. Um, but yeah, so, and then do all that crap. And then I'm probably going to do a uh, startup time in another video because it's kind of like I've been building up for it for a while and it's like kind of like a, you know, a uh, big event. So I'll probably do that in a separate video, uh, make like a little uh, thing out of it. Uh, but this is basically I just have to uh, do all this buttoning up type of crap. So yeah, I uh, probably do a lot of uh, time lapsing so you could see some uh, time lapsing. Uh, I might break from the time lapse in here and there to bring you in and, you know, show you the difference. Uh, so, let's get rolling, pun intended. issue uh in another video uh, i actually did one video for like filling up all the fluids throughout the vehicle uh so i put the parasitic fluid and filled the radiator with water as well it's part of another video uh, i did it right now but i also in that other video i did uh the brake fluid the clutch fluid all the bleeding uh the transmission fluid all that crap so that's in another video I, I think it just you know kind of Makes for like a more themed video as far as the fluids. But uh, after I filled the parasteric fluid, drip, 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 there's a leak. Let me show you. See that uh, red dot right there? That's parasteric fluid. That neck there, there's a uh, hose that comes from the reservoir that goes into that neck. And that's the side of the pump. Uh, and there's an O-ring in there. I looked it up. There's an O-ring to seal it. So uh, I checked to make sure that bolt was tight. I, I tightened it slightly, but it didn't stop the drip at all. 
so uh, at this point I have to take that off. It dripped considerably. Basically the whole reservoir is empty now and I had it full. So i got to pull that off and replace the O-ring. Hopefully that takes care of the job. Uh, hopefully I don't have to take off intercore pipe or anything else. Hopefully I can do it from underneath the car. So that way, you know, it doesn't take too, too long. There it is. That's supposed to be in the reservoir, damn it! I'm going to take that piece off and uh, take a look at what's going on. I'm actually hoping that the O-ring is ripped or something. So that way it's clear cut that that was the problem. Uh, so I'll take it apart. Obviously, this isn't a good spot to have the camera set up for all that. Uh, so I'll take it out, take it apart, and then I'll show you what I find uh, in the middle. Hopefully I find like a ripped O-ring. So... I'm going to get to work. Hopefully I don't come back with bloody knuckles. Ah! <laughs> so I got the thing off. Luckily I didn't have to take off the intercore piping or anything else. Uh, it was a little tedious on screw because it's a really tight spot. But I got it done. It was definitely a lot quicker than taking all sorts of crap apart. Um, so. Got it off. Got the O-ring off. And the O-ring looks pretty good. I don't know. Uh, I did before I did all that, I did, you know, while it was leaking, I actually did crank down on the bolt to make sure it was nice and tight, and it was pretty tight. I did got a tiny bit of a turn, but it was tight and it kept leaking. And now the O-ring looks pretty good. Alright, so here's the O-ring. Both sides. I looked very closely, I, you know, I did a little pinching just to see if I could see any, like, small hairline cracks or any dry rot or rips or anything like that. And honestly, I didn't see anything wrong with this. But, I never took this apart when I took the car apart. I never took this neck off. I disconnected the, no the hose that came onto the neck, but I never got involved with this right here or this bolt here. I didn't get involved with none of that. <sighs> so, I don't know what the damn problem is. I'm hoping, I did find, Nissan itself discontinued this part and the neck itself. Um, so, I did find one place that said it's a genuine Nissan part, O-ring, you know, on a website. I forgot the name of it, but it says it's genuine Nissan, who knows. Maybe they had some leftover inventory from somewhere or bought up stuff before it's discontinued. I don't know. But, I'm going to try to order it, see if it matches up perfectly, see if it's the same exact thing, and put a new one on and hope that fixes the damn problem. All I have at this point is hope, people. That's all I got. So that's going to hold up everything. I'm going to replace that. I'm going to have to wait on the shipping and everything. could be a few days. Uh, so that's holding my life up. I'm going to wait on another one. Uh, I could also, I'm, I'm probably going to do it anyway too. I'm going to go to like a place that has, you know, like a hose shop. Or a place that has like a ton of O-rings or something like that and see if they can match it up. Um, I might do that anyway just to have uh, like you know, a couple backups. This really shouldn't, they shouldn't cost more like a dollar or something a piece. So I'm going to try to do that anyway in the meantime. Uh, until, but I, I'm going to try to get the actual Nissan one anyway. And try to start, start at that point. Hopefully that fixes the problem. Fingers crossed. So in the meantime, I'm uh, basically just going to finish buttoning everything up. Uh, I still have to put the strut tower bar on here. Um, I'm probably actually going to do that after I get the car started, to be honest. Uh, I also, oh, I'm painting it right now because the, the ends are like black and like the top is like silver that goes across. Uh, so there's a tiny bit of surface rust on it. So right now the paint's still wet. I'm painting it right now. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably put it on anyway after it's done. So right now I'm just going to finish up like stuff like this, the hoses, the blow off valve, uh, vacuum has to get connected, the MAF sensor in here has to get connected, uh, the couple connections, the, the uh, vacuum on the fuel pressure regulator, uh, vacuum here, a vacuum here, uh, I think vacuum on uh, the boost controller, uh, a couple little things like that. Uh, there's a vacuum that goes on to the uh, charge pipe you can see right there so I'm going to do a little bit of that stuff time lapse it just basically kind of buttoning up the engine bay and getting everything situated get ready for startup and just hope for the best with this stupid seal so time lapse
I did a lot of uh, crying, a lot of cursing, and uh, a lot of uh, anger happened while I was uh, fixing that stupid leak. But it's it's done. I got it done. I did it, I did it off camera. Uh, maybe I should have showed it. I don't know. Whatever. The, the That bridge has been crossed, so there's no turn back now. I'm not going to undo everything I did to fix it. It's not happening. So let me show you what I did. First, I'll show you. Uh, obviously, it's all in here. It's all on. There's no leaky leaks on the ground. And the fluid. Uh, the focus isn't working good, but you're probably not going to be able to see this on camera. But there's a, a low, cold low, cold high. Here's hot low, hot high. Uh, so it's basically just about at the cold high. I know once I start the car and get it going and everything like that, it's probably going to get, uh, it's probably going to, you know, some of it, it's going to go to the rack, it's going to go down a bit, so that's going to be fine. So I'm going to keep my eye on that and refill as needed. This is the pump that actually had the problem. I did get a new O-ring, put the new O-ring in, and this guy had a problem. Uh, this is the bolt that holds the neck like this. So this bolt decided to do a uh, good old snap off, and, it, and so it broke off. I couldn't get it. I, it it's it's locked in there. I'm gonna have to weld a nut on it, and then you know unscrew it with the the nut or whatever. Uh, but uh, that's another day. That's another job for another day. So this is the pump that came on the original engine in this car. So the non turbo engine, the stock engine. This is the pump that came on it. Uh, so obviously it has this problem. The pulley on this was fine. The reason I was using this one, not the other one, is because the one from the turbo motor it, that was in the accident, the pulley was bent. This pulley. So this pulley was bent, so I want to use it. Uh, so I, I figure it's easier just to swap the pump, which should have been easier, but it wasn't. Uh, so what I did is I took the, the good pulley off of here. I took the bad pulley off the pump that's actually on the car right now and put the good pulley on the other pump and got everything back in there, put back together. Everything seems okay. Luckily, I was able to do all, put all taking the whole pump out and taking everything apart, put it back in without having to take the piping off, uh, taking the, you know, the upper radiator hose off, any of that stuff. So that was a little bit of a blessing. It was kind of tough, but I think in the long run, it was a little bit easier. So that's that. That fluid's there. I got water filled up in the radiator. Uh, and once I get the car running, and I know there's no leaks, no issues, or anything like that, I'm going to dump all the water out and then fill it up with uh, coolant. I have the uh, coolant down here, uh, peak. So I got that there. But for now, I got water. Uh, oil is all set. I uh, just uh, fix the level. Once it gets running, it's circulating, everything like that, I'll check it again after that. Uh, but I got oil, uh, I got the fluids set in here, uh, so I got the brake fluid topped out, got the clutch fluid topped out, both of those systems are bled, hopefully everything works okay, you know, I'll find out once I actually drive the car, make sure, you know, if it needs to be bled again or not, it'll go, let her go back in. And you saw this video, I did put the fluid in the transmission, so that's good. And a whole other video, uh, I did a video on the rear differential. It might have been two videos, I don't remember. But uh, another video that was a while ago, because I did I replaced the rear cover uh, and also re uh, put a new bushing in to the rear subframe, everything for the rear differential. I put the fluid in there for that. I will link it up here. I'll link to that video up here. Yeah, uh, so basically, fluid-wise, we're pretty much a-okay. I didn't put any uh, fluid in the uh, coolant overflow here, because uh, I figured it's just, you know, the water situation is going to dump it out. I'll fill that out once I do, like, the final fill-up with the actual coolant. Uh, but for now, fluid-wise, it's ready to be started. That's going to be the next video you shall see. It better start, David. So please, please pray for your boy. Please pray for the good old car. Please play, pray for this girl. And uh, hopefully it's uh, okay. 
Uh, so that's that'll be the next video coming up. Hopefully it starts. Hopefully I don't have any major issues. Hopefully things go pretty well. I already had a couple issues. I did power the car up, but I didn't turn it on or anything. But I did, you know, do ignition power. Uh, I did find a couple problems that I have fixed. Uh, one was the fuse for the radar detector, which was behind the radio, was blown. So I replaced that. The other, there was a fuse, inline fuse for the horns that was blown, uh, so the horns weren't working, so I had to troubleshoot and fix that, so that's fixed. Uh, hopefully, I don't have any other major problems and things go good. So, please keep me in your prayers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, please subscribe down here. Please give me a like and a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Help me grow this damn channel. Damn it! Help me out! Uh, <laughs> I mean that from, from my heart. I mean it from my heart. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to drive fast! Take chances!